Let's take another chunk here off of this pace 1125. We're going to talk about pages 7 through 10. And we're going to talk about covalent bonding. And then they introduce a term called oxidation numbers. And I just want to kind of decode that for you and help you see how we're going to use that. It's actually not as hard as it sounds, all right? It sounds complicated. I think you'll find this to be eh, fairly easy, okay? Make sure you have your periodic table ready. Where is mine? There it is. Da -da -da -da. All right, covalent bonds. So remember, ionic bonds form when an atom definitely gives up an electron, as in the metals, they give up an electron. And then some of these nonmetals over here willingly gain electrons. They become positively charged, negatively charged. The opposite charges, ions, attract together. We call that an ionic bond. <clears throat> Covalent bonds mean that the valence electrons, the electrons in the outer shell, remember that from the last piece, are being shared with each other, and those form the covalent bonds. Typically, they're nonmetals. Okay? So the nonmetals are this whole section, the upper right hand corner of the periodic table. These are metals, and then these are metals as well. Transition elements, we'll talk about those later. So let's talk about how these come together. Um, remember in, the, in a previous video, I pointed out these little numbers in the upper right hand corner. Those are called the oxidation numbers. And so for some elements, there's only one number, like oxygen. Only one number, negative two. Always, 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 negative two. All of the uh, alkali metals here are all positive ones. Column two here, they're all positive two. So that's a rule. And actually in your pace, if you look at page, um, page nine, they give some rules about a few elements that you can just be absolutely certain never change. But then there are some elements like carbon, okay, or like nitrogen that have multiple oxidation numbers. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative, sometimes it's two or four. Nitrogen has a whole bunch, doesn't it? Could be two, four, five, or positive or negative three. Wow, lots of, cho lots of choices. Oxidation has nothing to do with oxygen. You'd think it has something to do with oxygen. It really doesn't. It's kind of a weird word. The pace says it's not the same as the charge, but kind of it is. Kind of it is the charge. It's the charge. It tells us how many electrons are either being kind of shared out or being shared in. So it kind of it does affect the charge of that atom while it's reacting to another atom. Let's talk about, let's get some examples and maybe it'll make more sense. According to the periodic table, the oxidation number for hydrogen absolutely positively is positive one. Always. Oxygen is always negative two. Always. Now in the previous pace, we looked at the actual atoms and looked at the electrons and saw how they come in and share and why it forms H2O. But we can do the same thing just with these numbers, these charges, these oxidation numbers, okay? So since this has a charge of, oxidation number of, positive one, I need two of these to balance one of these, hence H2O. That way the positive is two, the positive two balances the negative two. Oxygen, again, oxygen is always negative two. You've heard of carbon dioxide, haven't you? Okay, so if I know this is carbon dioxide, di means I have two of these. I, even though that's water, I could actually call that dihydrogen oxide or dihydrogen monoxide, all right? That's a technical name for water. You can ask tonight at supper, say, Mom, can you please pour me a glass of dihydrogen monoxide? An impressor with all this knowledge you're gaining in chemistry. So um, <clears throat> this tells me <clears throat> that the oxygen, since I have two atoms and each one is definitely negative two, then this side of the molecule has to be negative four. So that tells me that carbon must be positive four. Let's look at the periodic table here and see is that, is that one of the possible oxidation numbers? Lo and behold, it is. It could be positive four. So in this case, it is. All right. Let's look at this one. Though. Have you ever heard of carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas that is a result of like cars running their engines. And if you get that, that gas trapped in a garage, you could die. Okay. 
Carbon monoxide, well, let's draw a line here. We know oxygen has to positively, must absolutely be negative two, yay. So what does that mean carbon has to be in this case? It has to be positive two. So some elements like carbon can have different oxidation states. They even use the word state, why? Oxidation number, oxidation state, different charge. We're all talking about the same thing, okay? Don't get confused. Um, but we know oxygen is negative two, so if we know it can form carbon monoxide, then in this case, it must, we must be having the positive two. And if you look at your table, for carbon, two is one of the possible charges, okay? All right, um, let's see. There's something else I wanted to point out. There is a chart here on page seven about all the different possible uh, if you, number of atoms, and then we have a prefix that goes with it. Maybe you remember these from geometry class or math class. And then down here they show some examples. So if I have one nitrogen and one oxygen, I call it nitrogen monoxide. Okay, look at the bottom one. I have two nitrogens with one oxygen. So that one's called a dinitrogen monoxide. We could have over here dinitrogen pentoxide. Woohoo! I think as you, that gives you enough information. Study the chart on the top of page nine carefully. You do not have to memorize all the oxidation numbers. They are on your periodic table, okay? So you can just use them. And then go to page 10. We'll end with this on page 10. Coming up with names. So now they're doing it with uh, nitrogen and oxygen, okay? Nitrogen dioxide. Since we know that the charge must be four on that nitrogen, we would insert the Roman numeral four in the name, okay? So nitrogen, Roman numeral four, oxide. Um, down here at the bottom, dinitrogen pentoxide. So I know that uh, that has to be positive 10 and negative 10 for those. So that means nitrogen must have a charge of positive five. Let's look at the periodic, oh yeah, nitrogen is one of those that has lots of possible numbers, so five is one of them. And so that's where the Roman numeral comes from, okay? They had this little thing here about fascinating facts. Those are fun to read. Don't, if you don't understand it, don't worry about some of these fascinating facts, okay? Um, they're to challenge the students who are really into chemistry and give them some extra tidbits to hold on to. But I don't think you're being held accountable for that when you get to the upcoming checkups, uh, self-test and pace test. All right, I'm going to stop there. It's a Wednesday, and uh, my tummy is telling me that it is supper time. So I'm going to shut this down and go home for supper and then come back for church tonight. I hope you do well in this pace.